Hey everybody, it's Ben at EFI University. Uh, I was just sitting around today doing a little bit of work on the Spintron and I was thinking about some different things and I realized I haven't done a tech video in a while for you guys. And so I thought I would share with you some interesting stuff that we look at in the dynamic realm. So many times when we build an engine, we look at everything and we measure everything in the static realm, but what happens dynamically isn't always the same. And so I started thinking about one thing that's critical to a high RPM and a high performance engine is the pocket on the piston. And so we're always trying to play this game between the, the clearance that we need between the valve and the piston. We definitely don't want them to touch, but we don't want them to be any farther apart than they have to be. Because what happens is any of that, you know, I'll call it dead space that's under the valve in that pocket, it's just hard to get the air to start moving. The bigger that volume is, the farther I have to move the piston before I change that volume. So theoretically, if I wanted to double the volume, when I start here, I only have to move to here and it's doubled. But if I start here, I got to move all the way to here before that volume is doubled. And it's the change in volume that creates the pressure differential across the valve and causes the air to move through the port and feed the engine. So the earlier in the cycle we can start the air moving by creating that, that difference in pressure, the better off we'll be. So in other words, we're always trying to play this game with how little of a clearance can I get away with and actually not hit the piston? We definitely don't want to have contact. And so uh, I'll show you a little bit about how much difference it makes when the engine's running versus not running. So typically what we do, if you follow me, we start with a chamber mold. And once we have the chamber mold, we have a good idea what the combustion chamber looks like so we can make a mock-up, kind of a dummy piston. But some of the things that are important, if you look at a cylinder head, is what we call the valve drop. Let's see, do I have a head around here? Sure. Uh, let's see. So on my cylinder head, as we begin to open the valves, they travel a certain distance before they get to the deck. So we have the distance is uh, how far the valve moves before it gets to the deck, and then we have the thickness of our gasket, and then we have the piston location in the bore. So sometimes your piston is right there at zero deck, sometimes it comes out above the deck, Sometimes it comes, you know, it's below the deck. But the thing you got to remember is that near top dead center isn't where we have most of our problems. It's typically going to be a little bit before top dead center on the exhaust side, like 10 to 15 degrees, and a little bit after top dead center on the intake side, 10 or 15 degrees. So what I thought we might do today is take a look at some actual data on the Spintron and compare it to a cam card and show you what we get. So walk over with me and make sure that doesn't fall off. Walk over with me and I'll show you what we have. So uh, this particular engine that's sitting on the Spintron I've been working on for a couple days, changing spring packages, installed heights, uh, doing lash loops, stuff like that. Uh, trying to work on finding the limit speed of the engine, keeping it into control and stuff like that. So on the screen over here with the data, you can see the RPM trace here and you see two valve traces that I've plotted out right here. Now the first valve trace I'll show you down here, that's purple, is uh, basically at 1,000 RPM, so we know we have the least amount of problems or deflection or, uh, you know, uh, harmonic issues. Now, as I scroll across here, you start to see a yellow one also, and uh, what we're seeing there is the compressive deflection as that cam lobe profile is moving the lifter and then the push rod and then the rocker arm and compressing the spring and, you know, pushing that valve open, but you can see on the opening side here, we start getting a delay, and that's what we call compressive deflection. Now, that's pretty typical and it's pretty normal, but as we'll see, if we zoom in here a little bit, you can actually, we can measure the difference there. And it's that compressive deflection that's actually helping us in this particular case because it actually gives us more piston to valve clearance when the engine's running than when we measure it on the on the engine stand with a dial indicator on the on the valve. So uh, let's zoom in here for a second and take a look. So what I got is a cam card, and on my cam card, one of the things that it tells me here is that the specs, the opening and closing specs, and all that are for when I'm intake center line is 112 degrees. So what that means is that we don't reach maximum lift on our camshaft up here until the piston is 112 degrees after top dead center down on the intake stroke. So when you hear people talking about advancing or retarding the camshaft, if I said I took my cam card and I advanced the cam two degrees, well, that means that I would reach maximum lift earlier in the cycle. So I'd be at 110 rather than 112, right? 
So thinking about that logically, if we zoom in on our data over here, I can start at zero degrees, and that's gonna show me where maximum lift happened. So if I was to go way over here at, uh, right down here we can see the value, and I'll just kind of zoom in here, and we'll try to get real close to 112 degrees. I can see here there's a pretty big difference between the purple line and the yellow line. So for example, right here at 112 would be top dead center. Now for example, if I wanted to be 15 degrees after top dead center, then what I would do is subtract 15 and I'd move over here to 97. So what I want to see is at 97 degrees, I have 352 thousandths of actual net lift. Now that's going to be a different number depending on the RPM that I have and how much compressive deflection that I've got. But as you could probably see, the higher I go in RPM, the more compressive deflection that I'm actually going to get. So basically, the more piston to valve clearance I get. And when we design the depth of our pockets, if we did it for uh, the minimum amount of clearance that we're willing to allow, then we would end up having more room than we actually need when we get to that high RPM. So it's not uncommon on some of the really, really high RPM engines we do that our piston to valve clearance, if we use a soft checking spring like you'd have on your flow bench, it'll be negative. We'll put the engine together and you can't turn it over without crashing the valve and we'll have to turn the adjuster on the rocker arm and you might be 15 or 18 thousandths negative P to V. By the time we put the real valve springs in there because they have so much load and our push rod and lifter and everything's moving, we might have 50 to 60 thousandths of intake clearance there just from the bending of the system. And that increases at the point where it's critical here on the Spintron we can see. So when the engine's actually running, we're getting more P to V than we actually had before. So using this way, we can actually measure that. And so uh, we can do this both on the opening side and the closing side. And it allows us to go in and fine tune how much lift we theoretically think the engine has versus once I have a complete system, we can know exactly what it truly has. And then we take that to the engine, we build the engine that way with seemingly clearances that are too small, and we get the extra benefit of having it pull on the cylinder head and it helps our volumetric efficiency. So I don't know if that was confusing or enlightening, but hopefully you got something out of it. And if you wanna learn more about this kind of stuff, we spend a lot of time talking about it in our competition engine development course, which by the way is coming up in November of 2020. If you wanna join me, that's my sales pitch for the day. But Hopefully you got a little bit of tech out of this and you can see what goes into building a very high-end racing engine rather than just a bunch of parts that fit together and don't touch. There's a little more to it than that. And I'd love to share more with you, but that's all the time I got for today. So uh, check us out on Facebook and our website and all those places and we'll see you soon.